Well, groups, it's just about done. It is the final day here, and I'm joined, unfortunately, by someone who didn't move on. This coverage presented by Mobilytics. Weldon from G2. Uh, both the other EU teams made it. You guys being first seed somehow did not. Uh, what happened? Oh, we're going <laughs> we're going straight into the meat of it. Yeah. Okay. Um, People say that uh, I just ask silly we questions. Lost three but. games, okay. and then we got eliminated. Yeah. Well, but you guys played six. Yeah, we won three games too. Okay. Okay. So you went even, and it just didn't work. Yeah, I mean, last year it was enough to tie for first, and this yeah. year it was enough to get third. Yeah. So I mean, uh, going into more of the specifics. What do you think it is that G2 was unable to make it out? Because theoretically, you guys are the stronger team compared to the other two EU teams. Does it just come down to groups, or was there other factors at play for G2 here at Worlds? Um, I mean, I think this is the strongest we've been all year, and I think that this was the most, maybe the most consistent we've been to, and I think we had the strongest grasp on the meta and teamwork, and our training was fantastic. So, I mean, it just has to it has to come down to strength of the teams and, and performance yeah, per, be pulling out performance when you really need to pull out performance, yeah. which of course is also part of part of uh, high performance is being able to do it on the day that it is necessary to do. So I think in this case it's just we lost to yeah. Samsung and we lost to RNG. But going back to the groups, if G two had Fnatic's group or G two had Misfits group, would G two be moving on right now? And if so, is that frustrating to you? I mean, yes, we would have massacred them, and it's kind of frustrating but not really because the goal of a tournament is to win it and if you are not going to be the strongest team then uh you know you i mean we know that now if yeah, so i mean yeah there's the question of like uh, are you better at a best of five or better at a best of one um what if you get a soft group for best of ones and you get to the best of five stages and you're better at adapting but personally i would rather be the team that's able to crush in best of ones and in best of fives yeah. so i'm okay with losing uh, if I continue to improve. Yeah. Uh, and I think that the player, players are okay with losing if they have something to hope for and something to improve on and something to aim for. Yeah. yeah, of course it's frustrating. It took it takes years to recover from devastating losses like this when you sacrifice a whole year of your life for like a single-minded purpose. But, um, but I don't think that like a soft group is any sort of enticing um, desire that, that pro players have. Yeah. Now... <clears throat> What do you think are the West, rest of the West's chances here at Worlds? As we're talking about it, Cloud9 is starting to get through and their group. Uh, but we know, of course, that the other EU teams are moving on. Unfortunately, no NA teams. Looking at sort of the other guys, do you see anybody escaping quarterfinals? Um, well, I mean, I think Misfits is doing incredibly in the boot camp. Like, they just seem to be progressing and progressing. I saw them just last week on stage uh, doing something that I'd never seen them do you know, on stage before, and they just did it fluidly and automatically. Um, and so I think that they're learning a lot from their environment. And I think that Fnatic is is really gelling. I think that they're learning, you know, I think that the training partners here really make you show up. Yeah. And so if you if you go and you, and you, you know, you, you scrim against a really strong opponent and you're losing like four games in a row, it really makes you have an identity crisis and solve a problem in your team that day. And so I think that's good for, for these teams. And I have no idea what sort of metamorphosis they're going to go through in the next few weeks. Yeah. Of course, I'm going to be cheering for them and, and hoping that they, that they advance. Yeah. What was this world's like compared to your previous one? Are you more proud of this year's world's or... Or do you, you know, just kind of generally comparing the two experiences, what were they like for you? So if we're talking about the team, um, like TSM versus G2, of course, I'm incredibly proud of both yeah. worlds. If we're talking about myself, I think that I learned a lot last worlds that I was able to apply this world. So I'm more proud of like my own actions uh, in this world because of what I was able to, I feel like, contribute. Yeah. And last year, I feel like I was able to identify places where I dropped the ball. And uh, yeah, and, and, and the same this year, of course, you know, I'm learning more and, I, and hopefully I can improve next year again. Yeah. So yeah, of course, this year, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happier with what I was able to do. But as far as the team goes, I think last year we pulled out a stellar performance as well. I think tying for first in the same group. You know, it's arguably a better result than what we had this year, uh, but it's just uh, last year they were really, really strong. Yeah. I don't think that SSG lost a single game from week one to the finals. Yeah. Uh, so this year we'll see if they do a repeat of that. that that's that's a commitment that they gave, you know, yeah. until they until RNG dumpstered them. So. so 
we talked about G2, we talked about Europe. I have to ask about TSM, uh, because I know I saw you yesterday and you were as frustrated about the TSM's loss as I'm sure a lot of North American fans, myself included. What do you think went wrong? Do you have any idea? Like, because you worked with these guys previously, right? Yeah. And this is actually the same lineup as you worked with previously. So what is your take on sort of the TSM situation that we saw this year at Worlds? Well, I mean, obviously I love these boys and I can't, um, I can't speak to things that, that like, I think shouldn't be said, uh, maybe in public, but I, I, th I think that it, it seemed like they were just under a lot of pressure this year. I mean, I, I didn't like kind of like the style of play that they had. It looked like there was no joy in it, and it felt like they were just striving purely for, to fulfill somebody else's. They were playing for the fans and for NA. They weren't yeah. playing for themselves, if you know what I mean. And like when you lose touch of like the reason that you're playing, when you when you pay like everything out in terms of blood for like the people that you're trying to represent, then um, you can lose a lot of the joy. And if you look at like how EU teams play versus how NA teams play, you see a lot more like joy, I would say, in their play style. And I think that's that we need to find a way in North America to like bring that back. And yeah. I think that it's an organizational and a fan-based thing yeah. that we just like as fans need to have a lot more fun with yeah. enjoying League of Legends and, and watching it and like being crappy and yeah. that's fine you know and being like oh okay well maybe we can do it this year you know and that would give our teams more freedom to just like take it not take it less seriously but to take it more joyfully and maybe that will allow them to unlock like you know less fearful play styles yeah we just got photobombed by the China, China PD. I don't know if you saw that. There was just like a march behind it. It was pretty good. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, sort of what you're, you're talk, talking about reminds me about some of the conversation I've seen. Some of the fans have posited this idea that like TSM was overhyped. And not just overhyped in the typical sense of like, oh, people are overvaluing them or saying that they are too good. But actually that the hype around this team, the analysts and maybe within the team themselves, everybody has kind of had some sort of like ephemeral effect on the team that either somehow cursed them or jinxed them or even mentally like combound, had some sort of effect on them where the the pressure and like the hype actually damages them. Is that kind of what you're getting at with when you, you speak to just sort of the pressure they were under and playing for the fans? Yeah, I think so. And I thought last year that I was able to shelter us from that hype and be really practical like one foot in front of the other and not slut, uh, over value. so like while there was all of this conversation out in the ether about it i felt like in the team we were we were really practical and we we're like these people are strong opponents and and then we you know they were good and we lost to them and they were better than us and it yeah. was really like it didn't feel at all like there was any choking it didn't feel like there was pressure afterwards i think that maybe like I was a little bit wrong in my analysis maybe some of the players like were hyping themselves up internally and, and we didn't know you know but but I think that like I don't know what the state in the team is this year um, and I know that there's always a lot of pressure when you're on TSM to show up for the sake of North America and the sake of the brand and the sake of the fans and uh, I think that that's the pressure I'm referring to and, and that all originates from like you know how how we treat the victories that they do have as a club is kind of like the status quo now yeah. and just expects, you know, um, like it's like, it's like Mithy was telling me, uh, who's the G2 support. He was saying, you know, uh, I mean, it's like, I've never, he's never missed a Worlds. And for him, it's just a given. He's like, God, if I missed a Worlds, I don't know what I would do, you know, retire yeah. or something. Cause, cause like for him, it's just like a, like a default definition now, but it's actually really hard to get here. Like it's, Really, just ask all of the pros sitting at home watching this event. Yeah. You know, it's actually incredibly difficult to be one of the best 16 in the world. Yeah. And so I think that, like, when you get to the point where you don't even think about that achievement, then maybe you can't tap into the strength that got you to that point that is going to lift you up to the next level. Sure. So what you're saying is, if we just take this TSM roster and then we move it to Team Liquid where there's no hopes and no expectations or anything. They'll have no pressure. It'll just be, they'll be, anything they do will be great. Then we'll be, be good, exactly right? Exactly like yeah. double lift during relegations. Okay. Just like, I can yeah. pick whatever I want. Yeah. I can like just YOLO flash in yeah. and it's totally fine because, you know, I'm yeah. on, I'm on uh, moneycation. Yes, exactly. So there we go. That's the secret. If we just get the TSM roster on Team Liquid, NA can win worlds no, through I, the power of Team Liquid's low expectations. I really think if we convert to best of ones and we make North America more like the WWE, yeah. you know, and just have a lot more like entertainment, yeah. maybe we'll get you know some personalities like yeah. 
I'm a cutie pie back in the in the pro sphere, and he'll be able to take on the Koreans. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see for sure. I mean, if if there's no relegation, you can bring I'm a cutie pie because you're never going to lose your team. So exactly. just I mean, of course, I what am I speaking? Genius. Uh, I'm a cutie pie. You can bring him in because of course he'll get first place because he's the best AD carry North America's ever known. Maybe the world. Anyway, Weldon, is there anything you would like to say to any of the fans? Uh, thank you for supporting G2 Army all year long, and I hope that you continue to support us in the off season by like supporting the teams that we crushed in the European finals and hoping that they go far to represent us and uh, look for us again next year. Yeah. Very good. Well, thank you so much for the interview. For everyone else, you can check out the rest of my coverage of all things Worlds right here on my YouTube channel. I want to thank you all so much for the kind words and support about my videos here in China. I've been trying to put out a ton of great stuff, and you know what? It wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for my sponsor, Mobile Addix. They are all about helping you try to get better at League of Legends by identifying your personal strengths and weaknesses, and you can actually check them out over at mobilix.gg slash Travis. They're also running a great giveaway that's in the description of this video, so feel free to check them out.